This NetIQ Cloud Access video demonstrates how to initialize the first Cloud Access appliance in a cluster. Before you can initialize an appliance, you must meet some requirements. You must have a publicly resolvable DNS name for the cluster. You must configure your L4 switch with this DNS name, and you must deploy the VM image. After you deploy the VM image, the appliance displays this welcome screen. The welcome screen contains the URL you access to initialize the appliance. To log into the initialization page, you must enter the URL from the welcome screen. The URL is the IP address of the VM image slash appliance slash init.html. The first option displayed on the initialization page is whether you want to join a cluster. Select Join a Cluster only if you are initializing an appliance to add to an existing cluster. In this video, since this is the first appliance, I am not selecting this option. Since this is the first node in the cluster, this appliance automatically becomes the master node in the cluster. In step one, you must configure the network settings for your appliance. My network settings are already configured because I used a VMware OVF file to deploy the image. You can use an OVF file, DHCP, or configure a static IP address during the initialization. The initialization page does not display the DHCP option when you assign a static IP address with the OVF file. The Network Time Protocol, or NTP service, allows the appliances to synchronize time with each other. Without an NTP server, the data on the appliances will become corrupted. Click Next to save the network configuration information. In Step 2, you must configure an identity source. An identity source is where the user accounts are stored. During the initialization process, you can only configure one identity source. After the initialization process is complete, you can add as many identity sources as you want, as long as the user's IDs are unique across all identity sources. In this video, I am using Active Directory as the identity source. I am entering the name of the user in the identity source that has read access to the identity source so that the appliance can search for user accounts. I must also enter the user's password. The search context is where to search for the users in the identity source. In this video, I am using the default users container in Active Directory. Again, you must enter the context using the fully distinguished LDAP format of the container like I did for the user account. Finally, I am entering in the IP address and the LDAP port for communication to the identity source server. In this video, I am using the default unsecure port of 389. For secure communication, use port 636. Click Next to continue. Step 3 allows you to define information about your cluster. You must specify your public DNS name for the cluster. This field is automatically populated in this video because I use the OVF file to deploy the appliance. The admin username is the user account in the identity source search context. This user becomes the administrator of the appliance. Click Next to proceed. In Step 4, you define the appliance password. The appliance password allows you to run through the initialization process again if you lose connection to the LDAP server. Running through the initialization process is the only place you use this password. Save this password in a safe location. Click Finish to initialize the appliance. The initialization process can take some time. In this video, I cut the initialization process to reduce the length of the video. When the initialization process completes, the appliance displays the Administration Console login page. You log in with the administrative account you defined in Step 3. In this video, I successfully completed the initialization of the first appliance in a Cloud Access cluster. Configuring the appliance is a topic for another video. For more information about Cloud Access, visit the Cloud Access documentation page listed below.